those are my reasons for why I'm not really interested in like learning learning a dialect and now I have to say something shocking I actually speak with a dialect Annyeonghaseyo you, annyeonghaseyo hey you It's Natalia and I have been learning Korean for over five years now as many of you know and I feel like I get this question a lot and maybe in actuality I really don't get it that much but I get it enough to feel like I get it a lot and that question is Natalia are you interested in learning any Korean dialects or any saturi which saturi means dialect and from here on out I will say saturi just because that's what I say when I'm talking about dialects in Korean and I feel like a lot of people or you guys because the majority of the people asking me this question is like you guys uh, I feel like you guys get a little surprised when I'm like so no about it like I'm like no I'm not interested in learning a dialect and no I don't ever see myself learning a dialect and no I'm just I'm just not interested like at all now there are several reasons I'm not interested in learning any saturi uh the first one is very light and I feel like you once you guys hear it, you'll be like oh yeah that makes sense and the other one you guys might be like, what is she talking about let's jump in with the first one shall we yes um the first reason I'm not interested in learning any saturi is because I don't need it as I told you guys at the beginning of this year I am moving to Korea this year yay and i am going to be in seoul which i didn't say that at the time but i'm telling you now i am going to be in seoul and they don't speak saturi in seoul like yes obviously there are people from other provinces of korea that move to seoul that speak with saturi but i have never been in a situation in seoul where someone has spoken to me in saturi and i didn't understand them like that has never happened if you're not familiar with me and my i guess history with korea i studied abroad in korea for a year outside of seoul it was actually in chungcheongdo which is like the province under Gyeonggi-do, which is like where seoul is along like that line of i don't need it as someone who wants to go to grad school in seoul I'm still not gonna need it. One, I'm still in Seoul. And two, in an academic setting, they're not gonna ask me like, oh yeah, write your essay in Busan Satsuri. Like, no, they're gonna be like, this is an academic setting. You use that, that Pyojuno, that standard Korean. And the other reason, like I said, is a little more serious. And I'm really, really interested in hearing your thoughts on this because honestly, I've never talked to anyone about this. Um, and it's kind of like, my personal thoughts on it now this is specifically for korea i'm not talking about like in other countries with other languages but specifically with korea since korea is so small in my understanding as someone who's not an anthropologist or a historian of any form or fashion my understanding is that the saturis came about because you know in the past when it was a lot more when it was more difficult to travel around korea because it's so mountainous like if you've never been to korea it is so mountainous there's so many mountains which is what mountainous means but it was a lot harder to travel between the different provinces so these you know everyone had their own like way of speaking because you know language develops over time so to me like each province's saturi has a very strong connection to like that area's history and their culture because each area is a little different so to me that's like this big like cultural thing i wasn't born in korea i'm not ethnically korean like no kind of korean at all i feel like it's kind of weird for me to go into an area where i don't live and start speaking their saturi i guess like especially as someone who's going to be in seoul I feel like it would be weird for me to learn Gwangju Saturi, for example. It would be weird for me to learn Gwangju Saturi and then travel to Gwangju just to start speaking Gwangju Saturi. Like, I feel like that's kind of, it's like this weird area of like, and this is just me. This is my way of thinking and viewing this. To me, there's like cultural appreciation, right? And then on this side, there's cultural appropriation. And I feel like learning a dialect and speaking it when you don't live in that area is like a gray area and it's a gray area. I'm not trying to swim in. I'm not trying to swim in this gray area. No, I like clear waters only. Like this isn't like something that a Korean person told me where they were like, oh, I hate it when non-Koreans speak my saturi or something. Like, no, that has never happened. Like you guys have literally seen my Korean friends teach me their saturi because I have friends that are from Gwangju. And I have friends that are from like Busan and just like that um, Gyeongsangdo area. And they'll teach me some of their saturi, but like it's not like I'm learning to speak it. It's more like I'm learning to understand it. Now this doesn't mean like I'm judging people that like learn a dialect in other languages. For example, I am Mexican, if you didn't know that. I am Mexican. I was born and raised here in the United States, but I am Mexican and I have never felt 
like offended or upset by someone who says, oh, I'm learning Mexican Spanish. Like I've never been like, oh my gosh, you are appropriating my culture and my language. Like I've never felt that ever. I'm like, well, yeah, you need to pick like a dialect of Spanish to learn because each country speaks differently. So it makes sense in that regard to like pick a dialect. Now I'm not saying like if you are moving to Korea and you move to Busan, like, if you start speaking with a Busan Satori, I'm not like claiming like, oh my gosh, you're appropriating like, I don't know, Busan culture or something. Like obviously that's different. You live there and you are surrounded by people that speak this like Busan Satori and like observational learning is a thing. Like we say, when you're learning a language, get a lot of exposure because when you have a lot of exposure, you hear the patterns and your brain just picks it up, right? That's observational learning. If you've been like learning standard Korean for several years and you move to Busan and you're there for like two, three years, obviously like your Korean is gonna be, you know, affected. It's gonna change a little bit depend like because of the environment that you're in. You have a connection to Busan now, like you've lived there. That is your home. It's not your like home home. I mean, unless it is now your home home, but like the, you have a connection there. Like to me, that's not, like this gray area. It's like, no, you you swim in, in the clear. Like that makes sense. Now I do want to clarify. I'm not saying like I would never learn Satori, like actually diligently learn it. Like I would do that. If someone who speaks with really, really strong Satori were to enter my life and I really wanted to know what they were saying, then I would start like actually studying. Again, not, I wouldn't be studying it to speak it, but I would be studying it to understand. It's more like a communication thing for someone who's important in my life, not to speak it, just to understand. Those are my reasons for why I'm not really interested in like learning, learning a dialect. And now I have to say something shocking. I actually speak with a dialect. I feel like a lot of you are probably like, what do you mean you speak with a dialect? We've heard you speak Korean. Girl, you ain't got no dialect. You ain't got no saturi, all right? Actually, I do. I speak with a slight Gyeonggi-do accent, which Gyeonggi-do is like the area where Seoul is, I guess you could say, like the Incheon. I think it includes Incheon. I don't really know. I haven't actually studied geography, like <laughs> Korean geography, but it's like that area around Seoul. And um, they have a slight, like saturi. They have saturi that is really, really similar to standard Korean, but it's not the same at the same time. And I picked up some stuff from this Gyeonggi-do saturi without even realizing that it was saturi. <laughs> For example, you guys, once I mention this, you guys will probably notice it in like among your idols or Korean dramas or whatever. Honestly, because so many people use it, that's is why I thought it was just normal and not Gyeonggi-do related. If I am looking at clothes at the store with my friend, I could look at this like, I don't know, item, whatever, and be like, oh, 진짜 잘 어울릴 것 같아. And I could say that to my friend, like, oh, I think this would really suit you. Like, I think it'd look so good on you. This is where the friend is. And I didn't say 진짜 잘 어울릴 것 같아, which is the correct way to say it. Oh, 진짜 잘 어울릴 것 같아. That's the standard way. That is the way you would say it in class. That is the way your teacher's gonna tell you how to say it. But I don't do that. I say, oh, 진짜 잘 어울릴 것 같아. Which is 경기도 사투리, which I did not know for a long time. I thought it was just like something people said like in casual, like colloquial Korean. Just because to be honest, I think it's a lot easier to say like i feel like it just comes off the tongue more easily and to be honest i've seen so many people say it to where i literally thought it was just like oh yeah it's like in english where we have certain words that we pronounce incorrectly on purpose it's just because it's easier and it makes you sound more native when you do it the second thing that i picked up from kyunggi-do saturi is pronouncing some of my as as os yeah so again this is something i picked up from like korean friends and like korean media okay so papada Papada means to be busy, right? So if you know standard Korean, the correct conjugation of yesterday I was so busy would be like, oh, 어제 너무 바빴어요. 바빠, like the, it's an ah, 바빴어요. But with 경기도 사투리, it's not 바빴어요. It's 바빴어요. So like in full context, like I could say, oh, 어제 너무 바빴어요. Like that's standard Korean but in Gyeonggi-do Saturi, which again is so close to like standard Korean, it would be like, oh, 어제 너무 바빴, 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 
바쁘다. Like I've heard it people say like oh like oh like 손가락이 진짜 아파. Like oh my finger really hurts. I kind of like picked this stuff up thinking it was just like normal because so many people use it. And no one ever corrects you if you do that. Your Korean teacher will correct you if you do that. So I do not recommend doing that in class. But like other Koreans are gonna be like, oh the 거의 한국인이야. Like oh you're basically Korean which if you've ever been to Korea, you will realize like if once you speak like a certain level of Korean and you know enough about like certain like aspects of Korean life, your Korean friends will just start telling you you're Korean. I'm not even joking. They'll be like, 미국인이 아니야, 너 한국인이야, 너 한국인이지. And you would have thought that I would have learned 충청도 사투리 because I was living in 충청도 for a whole year and nope. <laughs> anyway, uh, if you have any thoughts on that gray area stuff I mentioned before, please again leave it in the comment section. And if you have any resources for learning Satsuri, also comment section because I know it's really hard to find resources for learning Satsuri. And again, I'm not trying to discourage anyone from learning Satsuri, it's just my personal thoughts and I wanted to share with you guys. So, yeah, if you're interested in hearing some of my tips for learning to speak Korean, I made a video recently. I'll link it down here for you, and hopefully, I'll see you over there. So, yeah. Tell me about you guys.